All right, so I'm waiting for some material to come in. It should be in today. And I'm going to build my first maglev. And it's going to be built very similar to this one here with uh, the magnets over there and the magnets on the outside there just holding it up. It'll be a little bit different, but it'll be kind of similar to that. I'm pretty much done with these Newman motor experiments for now. This is the smaller of the two that I had. And so I put some stronger uh, magnets in it um, because I was trying to use my new pancake coil as a pickup coil, but it wasn't working very good. But I did find, find one thing out here. Let me show you. So you can see that it's it's at about um, eight volts and is drawing six. Amps. So there's a lot of amps going through here because of the nature of the motor itself. You can see the sparks. And when I put this on it, here, let me get the um, let me get the so you can see it. When I put the meter on here, let me see if I can do this so you can see it. It jumps up to like 16 volts AC. Because, of course, it's AC coming off here, right? So it goes anywhere between 16 and 18 volts, even though I'm only putting in 8 volts DC. But because of the amp draw... Uh, I believe that's the reason, because of the amp draw, it's producing higher voltage AC, which of course doesn't really mean anything. So I went and I got a bunch of, let me turn this off, I went and I got a bunch of diodes. Uh, these aren't the right ones. These are the 407s, but I got a bunch of um bridge diodes and I'm going to build a rectifier a simple diode rectifier I don't know if that's called a bridge rectifier or you know yeah it, it's going to rectify AC to DC so I'll be able to actually put some of this excess energy to work to see what I can do I haven't forgotten these guys it's strange. This is the one that I just bought that has the logic board attached to it. So you would think that that would be better at um, charging up the um, the super caps. And that this, this one that I made, which is just in series, well, this one actually holds the charge much longer than this guy and maybe that's by design maybe the the logic board on there isn't designed to hold it and because this is just made you know i i, I just did this in series i don't know <clears throat> excuse me but i haven't forgotten that but i think i'm going to be done with with these guys I tried I tried doing the um, the carbon you know I even had it in a, in a housing like this it's it just didn't work I don't know what the deal is I've got another one here somewhere but yeah it just wouldn't work here it is so, you know, I figured, hey, right, it's connected via uh, a copper cable. But when I try to do it, nothing. I get absolutely nothing. So I'm, I'm pretty much giving up on this. And I'm going to start building uh, uh, the maglev. Ciao. 
So, quick update. I think I found a good use for these Newman motors. There's a lot of good coil wire there, and so I can I can use a different setup, like a hall sensor. Does get the transistor pretty hot though. So I gotta figure something out, some some way to bleed that off. But I mean it's not that hot. Hot enough, but not that hot. But anyway, I can definitely still use these coils. And I, like I said, I'm going to put something on the end here. Probably this monster. These are all N52s. I'll put it on there and see what I can... See if I can generate anything with that. I don't know. Maybe not. All right, ciao. So I changed the heat sink on that, Jorge. I put a piece of aluminum that has um, some fins on it. And I also used a little CPU grease. And that seems to have helped. So yeah, I'm definitely going to get some more use out of these coils instead of doing a Newman thing. Ciao. Maybe doing something like that with those big N52s. Got to turn it up. There we go.